Fraction Hamiltonian is minus g um, psi bar gamma T A psi A A mu plus G F A B C D mu A nu A A mu B A nu C and then there's another term which is a quarter G squared F A B C A B U A nu C F A D E A D mu A E nu. Alright. So that's that's the um, interaction Hamilton. Here. This came from squaring the that's right. The, the this is field phase, strength. The Lagrange density is minus a quarter F A mu nu F mu nu A and um, you square that, I mean, you, you multiply that out, mm -hmm. you keep the quadratic part as L0 or H0, and this is the, uh, this is what's the rest. Now, the fermion propagate is very much the same. It's, uh, say, I, what shall I use? I alpha of X psi bar J beta of y is integral p fourth k over two pi to the fourth i over k slash minus m alpha beta delta i j e to the minus i k x minus y and um, you might be puzzled by this but there's a simple way of figuring out what that is. Namely, you take k slash plus m times k slash minus m. What you get is k slash squared minus m squared. And this is k mu, k nu, gamma mu, gamma nu. And so this is, since this is symmetric, you can symmetrize this symmetric in mu nu. You can symmetrize this, and this is half the anti-commutator of gamma mu with gamma nu. And that gives you then uh, But do we don't have... Excuse me? We don't have a... Uh, we just have k slash minus m. And the denominator of the propagator. Right, k slash minus m, yes. We're calculating this this other thing. Yes. Okay. Because um, by the miracle of the division, um, so this is k squared minus m squared. Oh, I see. Because the fermion propagator usually had that k slash up top. Right. Right. And so what happens is you then say that, um, uh, what do we want? We want k slash minus m. So you divide both sides by k slash minus m and by k squared minus m squared, and you get k slash plus m over k squared minus m squared is equal to 1 over k slash minus m. And so this is what you use here. So in other words, the actual form of this then that you use is if I switch say to P, it's D fourth, well I better say with K, I guess. D fourth K over two pi to the fourth I K slash plus M. And now it's alpha beta divided by k squared minus m squared plus i epsilon delta i j e to the minus i p x minus y. 
Okay, so that's the fermion propagator. The delta IJ is because if you have different flavors of fermions, they um, they only uh, they only work. I mean, they only match if, if they're the same. Otherwise, you get zero. Oh, announcement. Um, I checked with Sandra with. I don't know what you found out. <laughs> I forgot to ask. You forgot. <laughs> I was going to ask for backup, but um, one of the problems of assigning the same task to several people is the person that assumes the other one. Um, in any event, uh, I asked Sandra, and she said that we can have room five at 5.30 on Monday. So five is better than 11.31. And, um, And um, I will also talk with the person who's using this room to see if they would do be, they would prefer to have room five, in which case we may switch. And as I say, you guys all got a couple uh, an email from me. About the Casimir operator? Yeah. So um, I did add a section of the book on has been operated, which is fine. But the actual identity that we sort of stumbled upon is um, something that isn't direct, isn't simply related to the Casimir operator. But um, I found it in uh, as identity A38 in uh, Pesca. And um, so it, it, he says that it holds for defining representation of SUN. Um, we notice, well, it's more general than what I gave. I gave a special case of it. All right, anyway, it's, let me, that's either here or there, though, for what we're doing now. All right, let's look at the gauge boson propagator, and that's zero, time-ordered product, A, A, mu of X, A, B, mu of Y, and as we'll see on Monday, you can eventually get this to look like this, minus i, eta mu nu, over 2 squared plus i epsilon, delta a, b, e to the minus i, q, x minus y. And again, it's diagonal in the color or flavor. In the and you really can't do anything with Feynman diagrams if you don't know, at least from first principles, if you don't remember what the fields look like. And since we have been using several different books, it's um, useful to, all right, now, this is A, P, S, and it would be I would be the color or flavor index. And then we'll have U of P and S. I actually left that out. I don't know if I can stick it in somehow. Um, and then we have the antiparticle P dagger of uh, P, S, I. V of P and S. And of course, I just left out a phase factor. This is E to the minus I P, X. And this is PPI. And, and alpha is the spinner index? Excuse me? Alpha? Alpha is the spinner index, so this alpha would hang on this. Okay. Good question. Well, sure. Did I just give you MMs? You don't want more MMs, right? Well, these are peanut MMs. <laughs> <laughs> You said I is the flavor or color or something? Flavor or color, yes. And where did, why are we adding that now? Sorry. That's fine. Well, we're doing Yen Mill, so what we have here, for example, is this is I, I, J, J. Those are the flavor or color, depending on what it is, uh, indices of the spinner fields. 
and uh, the gauge fields are more obviously labor labeled. Okay. So this is what you'd have in the electro weak theory or in quantum chromodynamics. Okay. Now what about A? Well, A A mu of X is integral dqp over 2 pi cubed, 1 over the gamma square root of 2 Ep, sum on S, and now we have A of P S. A, well, unfortunately, I'm using A for three different things, capital A for the field, A for the annihilation operator, A for the color index. If you want to make it clearer, we can just be. And um, then we've got an epsilon mu of P S. And gosh, I put an A on that. That's, that's silly. P to the minus I P X plus um, a dagger of P S. Let us say P epsilon star mu of P and S. P to the I. All right, so that's the gauge for you. So let me just say we're doing Feynman diagrams. The uh, interaction Hamiltonian is a fermion piece, and then two pieces of the gauge field, which come from this term, apart from uh, the quadratic piece, which we retain in each zero. And uh, there's a, there's a uh, the fermion piece of the action gives you that. So the gauge group for QCD is SU3, right? Yes. For the electroweak theory, what is it? It's 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 SU2. Sorry. SU2 cross U1. Uh-huh. Okay. And in fact, can you do, can you split it's up the SU2 left cross U1? So is the weak theory by itself described by this SU2 left? Like does it split up like that if I just want to describe QED or if I just want to describe the weak theory? That would be nice, but no. <laughs> and and, and it, 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 for better or for worse, it's an SU2 left cross a U1. And then part of the SU2 left combines with part of the U1 to give electromagnetism. And the other part Lines to give the interactions of the Z boson. We'll do that at some point. Um, I, can, I can say more about it today if I, if I finish this calculation. Is there a question? So the gauge bosons are still spin one, they just have an additional color charge now? Yeah. Can we have gauge bosons that aren't spin one? Um, no, the gauge bosons are always uh, spin one. At least in all the theories I've seen. So is the graviton that there are boson? there are I mean they're, they're, the only other boson in the standard model the restriction is the Higgs boson, and um, that's scalar, right? It's scalar, but it does carry flavor. But the, fact, but the purpose of gauge bosons is to is to this one I have to answer. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, go go down central to university, down uh, up university, uh, north on university to Lomas, and and then turn right on Lomas and go about a block until you get to Yale, and then turn left, uh, and uh, the Physics and Astronomy building is, is just there uh, on your right. You have to go up toward a roundabout and then curl into the parking lot. 
And uh, it's room 184. decomposition of electroweak into U1 cross SU2 left? Is it this SU2 left that is uh, the reason for parity yes. breaking? Okay. Yes, and, and it's really absurd because it's maximal. In other words, it's not something that's a normal gauge, normal gauge symmetry and then is slightly broken so that parity isn't exact. Instead, it's that the W's, it's that the SU2 left interacts only with the left-handed region. The old left-handed parts of the spinner field. Okay. Okay. Um, If one uses the Feynman diagram um, rules, then you need to label the momentum, and um, that's the convention. So I'm going to do the thing first from first principles, and then using the rules, and we'll magically get the same answer. Now. We've done this kind of thing already many times, so I'll just quote the answer. It's um, I G squared D bar of Q for the first two diagrams. Gamma mu T A I over P slash minus K2 slash minus M gamma nu T B plus gamma nu TB I over K2 slash minus Q slash minus N gamma nu TA UP epsilon U star K1 epsilon star nu of K2. Okay. And remember as I derived here, the k slash root n, k slash minus n gives you just k squared minus m squared. And so 1 over k slash minus m is equal to k slash plus m over k squared minus m squared. All right, so the, the thing that I want to do now is to compute this diagram which um, has this new 
intrinsically Yang Mills vertex, which, is, which comes from this term here. So this is something that we haven't seen before. And so if we look at this as K1, K2, uh, time order product, e to the minus i equals z, p to of x, and then pq, I'm sort of abbreviating things, then this is equal to k1, k2, minus i squared over 2, integral p of v1, v2, pq, e fourth x1, e fourth x2, and so this is, in other words, minus g squared over 2, k1, k2, big integral, big time order product, and one term is minus a mu a psi bar down mu psi, well, ta, let me stick the ta in there, plus f a b c d mu a mu a mu b a mu c 1 and then the same thing here minus I'm a little careless with the indices it may be that I should have used different indices but let's just let it go with that This is point at x2, end of time order product, pq, d4 of x1, d4 of x2. Okay, so what you can see is that you can either let this interaction act at vertex 1, or you let this one act at vertex 1. That gives you a factor of 2. So in other words, you, you, you can have it be 1, 2, and then you can have it be 2, 1. And if you just compute 1, you can cancel the 2. And um, the 2 minus signs cancel, and so what you wind up with then is g squared, k1, k2, integral time order product, now A A mu psi bar gamma mu T A psi at one with um, F A B C T K A A lambda A K B capital A lambda C at two P Q. So this is where we are at that stage. Now you remember that these states have a square root of twice the energy built into them. And um, so in fact I could, just to save time, space, effort, and chalk, uh, I can say this is uh, g squared, the product of the square root of 2e, all of them, and then what we have here is annihilation operator, K1, a spin index, a, uh, a flavor index, times A, K2, another index, and a B. And then over here, This would just be um, a dagger of PS and um, I and B dagger of Q um, S prime and uh, there's, there's pizza here. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right, yeah, so those are the eaters. Uh, so I'm supposed to sign something? Yeah, that's a
Okay, so one at a team. They're all, um, all, all of it is uh, um, vegetarian. So the meat that they put on pizza is lethal in the United States. <laughs> In, um, in, in Italy, they actually um, they actually ban some of the <coughs> stuff that we put in sausage. Ignoring the G squared term in our potential? Yeah. Okay. You're saying that's small? It doesn't contribute. Um, well, it could contribute in higher order. Mm. You're absolutely right. Um, but this is already a order G squared. Yeah. So. <clears throat> oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So it's a order G squared one. Yeah, so you see this one is also order G squared because it's one here and one here. Mm. But these extra terms would be something like <clears throat> um, one possibility would be this. Okay. crossing, this is a vertex. So this would be g squared g g, so this would be g to the fourth. And then and then also how did we get how did we get the first two diagrams? It seems like we're only using the first term in V to get those, right? Because that's what we basically have. The first two diagrams come from this. Okay. But this I mean, these two diagrams that are just like electromagnetism, so I didn't bother to do them in detail. I'm thinking you're including that term here, though. Well, there's a two oh. fermion photon vertex. Yeah. You've got this thing. You've got two vertices here. Okay. What would be an example for, for the third diagram? Electron Which third? This, this is one the third here. diagram. Yeah. This is what we're doing. But I'm, I mean an example. You mean what physically could yeah, that physically. be? Yeah. Well, all of this is fermion, anti-fermion goes to two gauge bosons. So for example, we could be computing electron positron goes to W plus W minus. Because if we were doing that, <clears throat> I'd have to take into in consideration all the details of, of the electroweak theory. More simply, this could be QQ bar goes to two gluons. Mm -hmm. And uh, you would then say that the two gluons would put for the if you were doing proton and proton scattering, there were three quarks in the proton, three anti-quarks in the anti-proton 
two DS2. So one quark and one anti-quark could do this and produce two gluons. Those two gluons would pick up um, UU bar and DD bar pairs and uh, hadronize, so to speak. And so you'd get a stream of hadrons, mostly pions in this direction and pions in that direction. And that, those things are called jets. So let's see. Um, so we're uh, we're and I think I'm on this line here. Okay. Well, if we refer to these formulas for the fields, we see that this thing is. This would be a G squared, by the way. G squared, product of root two E's. And then zero, the two A's. So let me just say, I'm just going to call them A1 and A2 because we know that one carries K1 and in index A, and two carries K2 and in index B. Um, and now we're going to have the equal the time order product. I'm going to leave this gauge field the way it is. But uh, this psi bar and the, and the psi and so forth, this is going to give us a V bar of Q and say S prime over the square root of 2 EQ. And then we're going to have a gamma mu and a TA and a U of P and S over square root of 2 EP. Now, the fact, and, and we, let's see, we're saying that these are carrying in P I Q J. So this is the J I element of T A. Um, the fact, once you put in the J and the I, it doesn't matter where this T A is because this thing is a four spinner and acts on the gamma mu and the V bar all acts on the gamma mu from the other side. So this thing is done once you put it once you put in A, J, and I. Then you have E to the minus I P X1 and uh, E to the minus I Q X1 and um, well, I think that's, that's enough of that. And then what's left here is FABC DK AA lambda X2 A capital B X2 A lambda C X2. End of time ordering and just vacuum D fourth X1 and D fourth X2. Okay. So now what I want to focus on is is this structure here and uh, this one and that. So in other words, I want to look at square root of two, uh, let's just call them E1 and E2, these are the energies of the final gauge bosons, zero A of K1 and uh, some spin index A, A of K2, this triple prime B, and now integral time order product AC mu X1 E to the minus I 2 plus P X1. And then I'm writing this F D E F because really these are, this is an independent vertex. And um, DK. AD lambda X2 A kappa E X2 A lambda F X2 equals X1 equals X2. 
Okay, so so this thing splits up into a into three different terms, really, depending upon which one has in which of these gauge fields has index C. Because the one that has index C is the one that can form a time order product with with this AC, and then the other two are going to create the final state gauge bosons. And so this is the square root of 2e1, 2e2 uh, 0, let me just call it a1 and a2 since we know what they are, e to the minus i q plus p x1 and time order product AC mu x1 and now I've got a big parenthesis here and I've got three terms. One term is FCEF DK right, C is that index. DK AC lambda x2 AK E x2 A lambda F x2 and then there's an F D C F D kappa A D lambda x2 A kappa C x2 A lambda F x2 and then there's a third term F D E C D kappa A D lambda X2 A kappa E X2 A lambda C X2. So there are these three terms, end of time ordering, vacuum, E fourth X1, E fourth X2. So now here, you've basically got, the, well, in, in, in the, these two terms, you've simply got, I mean, after this one create, this one and this one is used to create, or are used to create the final state gauge bosons, you then have two gauge fields left over, and that gives you the propagator, which is the uh, mean value of the vacuum or the time order product of the two gauge fields, which give you that. And, um, in the first case, you have the same thing, you just have an extra derivative. And um, so if we look at what the gauge fields are, they're just the creation operators and annihilation operators, the two pi's, the root 2e, polarization vector, and then this phase vector. And so this whole thing then is uh, the two e's go away actually, and so we have e to the minus i q plus p x1, and then let me just see if I'm yeah this is really uh, okay big bracket first term is vacuum time ordered ac mu x1 d kappa a lambda C X2 vacuum. And now this remaining thing is F C A B, and I'm picking A and B um, because those are the labels for the final state gauge bosons. But now you can have, in this case, you can have the A from here and the B from there, or the B from here and the A from there. But when you do that, what you get, let me, let's see, so I skipped this in the notes. What you get is an F C A B, and then you get the, the A from here, the A from here and the B from there. And so that means that you have epsilon star 
uh, K1, because it's K1 that goes with the A, epsilon star um, K2, and let's look at the indices. This one has a Lorentz index kappa and lambda. So this is kappa and lambda. So that's the first term. But then you also get FCBA, epsilon star. Uh, now it would be uh, K1 lambda, epsilon star kappa K2. So you get those two terms. And you see this, because the structure constants are anti-symmetric, this is just minus that. So all together, what you have is this is parentheses, epsilon kappa star of K1, lambda star of K2 minus epsilon lambda star of K1, epsilon kappa star of K2. Right. So that's, the, that's what happens to this. The other two are a little bit simpler because but it's, it's the same sort of thing, a c mu x1, but now we have a kappa c x2 vacuum. And now we have f a c b, and again, I'm going to take advantage of the anti-symmetry of the structure constants. And so what we get in this, oh, but in this term, we've got a derivative on this. So in, in, in this particular case then, we have uh, a d by dx upper kappa, and that pulls down an, uh, an i k1 kappa, but, um, uh, let me just check, the sign, yes, sign is a plus, so the notes are actually So this gives us I K1 kappa epsilon star lambda K1 epsilon star upper lambda K2 and um, minus I K2 kappa epsilon star lambda K2 epsilon star upper lambda K1. And I must say I, at the moment, don't immediately read. Oh, yes, yes. The point is that we're that in this term the lambdas are contracted. So if this guy goes into the propagator, these two guys produce the final state gauge bosons, and so you have the lambdas contracted. And then the last term is similar to this. It's zero time ordered product again, a c mu x1 a lambda c x2. Now it's f a b c of all things. And it's just like this, but now uh, this one is, is making the propagator. These two are making the final state gauge bosons. Um, but now it's lambda kappa. So this is I K1 kappa epsilon star lambda K1 epsilon upper kappa star K2 minus I K2 kappa epsilon lambda star K2 times epsilon star upper kappa of K1. And close this bracket. 
end of time order in e to the i k1 plus k2 x I have here x1 but that's wrong it should be x2 d4 x1 d4 x2 Okay, well, um, let's see, we haven't gone through the quantization of the yang mills theory in detail. I'm going to try to do that on Monday. Uh, it's analogous to the quantization of the electromagnetic field, and one uses those uh, uh, functional integral tricks, which were first invented by two Russians, Vadyev and Popov. Were you going to say something? Um, <clears throat> oh, never mind. Nope, got it. The first line was where the derivative was acting on it. If you say so. Well, I mean, I, if you want to ask a question, do, but I, I, I don't even know what you mean by the first line. Okay, so, up here. This, D, this derivative acts right. like that. And that's the one that pairs with the other A mu in the propagator, right? In the first case, yes, because I deliberately, I chose this index to be C. Right. And so then I have an option of, the, you have D, E, F here. One of them is going to be C. And the other two can't be C. Mm -hmm. And they have to be A and B. Or they can be A, B, or B, A. And that's why we get two terms. So it's, um, it's complicated. Um, I was working this out for, from scratch yesterday. And uh, when I first wrote down all these terms, I said, my God, I hadn't done one of these in a while. So. Anyway, so we're going to have the following uh, conditions. We're going to say that k mu, epsilon mu of k, and here I mean k mu, k, k1 or k2 is zero. And uh, we're also going to be saying that epsilon lambda, epsilon lambda star is. <laughs> does he care about physics? No. Now he does. <laughs> dedicated as well. Okay. Um, this, I want the space part to give us a one. Heston has a minus one, so this is minus one. So now, I am three is equal to g squared v bar q s prime gamma mu u of p and s. And now this integral, and it'll be e to the minus i q plus p x one plus i k one plus k two x two. Tc ji d4 x1 d4 x2. And now I have to put in the gauge boson propagator, which is to say we've got this term occurring three time, times, but one of them has a derivative on it. And so this is. Let me see if I can think of another index here. We've got PQ, and I use Q prime. Um, well, why don't I just follow the notes? Q prime. I, we've got K already used. So this is Q prime squared plus I epsilon. And again, this is a tree level diagram. The I epsilon is a matter. There's a minus I e to the minus i q prime x1 minus x2. And because q prime occurs only as the square, it doesn't really matter which one we do today. OK. Now, the derivative is a derivative with respect
respect of the capital derivative on the x2, and that then pulls down a plus i q prime kappa. So we've got i q prime kappa, and then we have f c a b, and then we have this um, anti-symmetric structure here, lambda star k2 minus lambda star k1 kappa star k2. Okay. But um, there's an eta. And what's the eta doing? Well, the eta will be a mu lambda. So it'll be an eta mu lambda. And then we have plus FACB. And now, these two things are the same. So we just have IK1 minus K2 kappa. And, um, but it's epsilon star K1, epsilon lambda star K2. And now, what we've got is a, a mu with a kappa. So instead of being an eta, because one is raised, this is delta kappa mu. And the third term is F ABC of all things. And once again, the lambda is raised, and so it's delta. Delta lambda mu. And now it's this structure here, and that is, um, I'm just going to just write it K1 kappa, epsilon star lambda K1, epsilon kappa star K2, minus I K2 kappa. Epsilon star lambda k2 epsilon star kappa k1. All right, and I guess we need one more parenthesis. Okay, so that's the whole nine yards there. And now, as usual, if you do say the either the x1 or the x2 integration, you're going to, let's do the, uh, say, x1 integration. The x1 integration will tell you the q prime has to be q plus p. And that's what you can see, see instead of redoing the, instead of going down there, I'll just redo the diagram. This is carrying p, this is carrying q, so this line has to carry q p plus q surprising even. It comes out from the integration. Um, then the other d fourth x integration gives just gives you 2 pi to the fourth delta of energy conservation. All the root two e's of cancel. And so we've got I m3 and m3 just means that it's diagram 3. E squared g bar um, QS prime gamma mu U PS PCJI 2 pi to the fourth delta of P plus Q minus K1 minus K2. The propagator gives P plus Q squared in the denominator. And now we have this term that multiplies. And so um, Q prime is, um, it turns out Q prime is minus P minus Q. Anyway, so this is F C A B minus Q minus P kappa 
times epsilon kappa star k1 epsilon lambda star, well, I better hurry up, k2 minus epsilon lambda star k1 epsilon kappa k2 star a to the lambda and then plus FACB K1 minus K2 kappa epsilon lambda star K1 epsilon lambda star K2 delta kappa mu and then FABC K1 kappa epsilon kappa star K2 epsilon star mu K1 minus kappa 2 mu epsilon K star K1 epsilon mu star K2. Okay, so that's the whole thing. So I incorporated one of the deltas there. If, if I were to do this delta, then this kappa would be a mu. So I can just do that and get rid of this one. And um, there's a mu lambda there. Um, and uh, we're summing over lambda, so basically I'm just lowering this lambda, making it a mu. Get rid of this one, so that simplifies that. Okay. All right. The um, the upshot now is that um, let's see if I've already simplified. Oh, this by energy momentum conservation minus Q minus P is the same thing as minus K1 minus K2. And so this is minus K1 minus K2 sub kappa. So let me just stick that in there. That's because all this is multiplied by this delta function. And now we have some nice cancellation, namely the K1 can't, um, the K1 gives zero when contracted with this epsilon. So only epsilon 2 survives there. And then over here, the K2 cancels, but epsilon 1, but the K1 survive, survives. And um, so what one has is 2 pi to the fourth delta of say K1 plus K2 minus P minus Q. Um, G squared, let me just abbreviate it as V bar gamma mu U TCJI over Q plus P squared. And now this thing is um, minus FABC Well, let me, let me, let me go, let me, let me drop down a little bit. This A, the, the FABC, this is FABC, this one has a minus sign in it. And so if we pull out the FABC, then what we get is minus two, and in fact, what happens is this term and that term give exactly the same uh, value. Um, in other, and what we get then is minus 2 k2 dot epsilon star of k1 times epsilon mu star of k2 plus 2 k1 dot epsilon star of k2 epsilon mu star of k1 and then we get minus k1 minus k2 mu epsilon star 
K1 dot epsilon star K2. So that's one. That's the final result, at least at this stage. And then you have to add this to the first two magnitudes, which I called M, I, M, 1, 2. And um, then you see what you want to do. If you want to get a cross section, you have to basically square the thing and then you decide uh, whether you're going to be summing over initial and final spins and, um, and so forth. So the question is, well, do you want to do this every time? Of course you don't. And so uh, there are the uh, Feynman rules, which are quoted in, um, in Peskin. And uh, so the question is, how do you get the right to the same answer if you're doing the Feynman rules? Well, it, it, it turns out it's only three lines, which is why uh, Feynman rules would tell you this. They say the vertex I G V bar of Q has a down view U P S T D say J I. So I'm doing the Feynman rules. Then the propagator would be minus I eta mu rho over P plus Q squared, and that's because We have P going in, Q going in, and then uh, K1A, K2B, and then K3C. And uh, I think I have, well, I don't remember the arrows now on the diagram, but. It's over here. Yeah, and I've got them written down. OK, so they're all going out. Good choice. OK. So one gets that. The rest of the propagator is delta CD because the, the flavor or color indices have to be the same. And then the vertex. And the final rule for the vertex is F A B C. Eta sigma tau minus K1 plus K2 rho plus eta tau rho minus k2 minus k1 minus k2 sigma uh, plus eta rho sigma k1 plus k2 plus k1 tau epsilon sigma star k1 epsilon star tau k2. All right. What does the choice for the orientation of the arrows on the gauge boson determine in this expression? You, you, so you, know, I, you know what's coming in, I, J. But these things are their own antiparticles, so can I just flip the arrow at will? And like, What does that affect? The arrow says what, what the direction of momentum is. And normally, this is K1 going out, K2 going out. But this one, oh, means, I see. We're this one means that K3, here, K3 is minus P minus Q because it's pointing this way. I see. These aren't like the arrows on the fermion. That is, they're not telling me particle antiparticle. They're just telling me the direction of the momentum. They're telling you the direction of the momentum. Okay, right. All right. Yeah. Okay. So that's that. And now what we have to do is just uh, act on that. Well, clearly. Uh, if we make the D a C, then um, this simplifies to 2 pi to the fourth, the overall delta G squared, D bar down to mu U, T C J I, and A B C over T plus Q squared. So it's the, right, okay. Now, what about all these other terms? Well, what we have then is eta sigma tau, and this is, well, k2 minus k1 mu. I'm using the a, I'm using this delta and that eta. And then minus delta tau mu 
K1 plus 2K2 plus delta sigma mu 2K1 plus K2 for all that times epsilon sigma K1 star epsilon four star K2. Okay, well, um, indeed, this then, uh, after you contract it, gives you that. So it, it works. Um, let's see, in a few minutes left, let me try to answer some. Oh, I've got to, you guys, well, let's see, we've got to give out, we have these goddamn idea forms. And um, because of the financial crisis, the pencils that they supply us with, instead of being full length, they're about three inches long. So you stole all these? And I got these from the uh, front office. I have. It's supposed to be number two. There's a lot of regular size pencils in there. They were. Yeah, that's true. They'll have both. They'll have both. All right, if you guys want these, I don't know what you want, but I got it. Right, who wants a pencil? Sweet. Monday. So you can you can click it all. 